Hey everyone, I hope you're well. So this is kind of a second part, a sort of sequel to the Lolita Iceberg that came out a few months ago. Basically a sort of tier 7 um, because there's been a few things that I either didn't think to add or maybe I didn't know about um, on the previous one. So first of all, such as the previous, like the previous version um i gotta give a thanks to ruffle chat they made a thread on the page about the sort of things that you would only know about if you have been you're into deep basically which is going on what an iceberg is and another thing that i wanted to mention is that some of these things as well as the previous um video they kind of lack information i feel like you kind of had to be there i guess in order to really have the full scope of what really went down back then um there's a lot of things that have been deleted since then a lot of information has been deleted or has been lost a lot of pictures that for example were only available on photo buckets they're not available anymore um and a lot of those things were screenshots and evidence i guess you could call it um so it's kind of difficult to figure it out on your own today with the evidence that you find on the internet and also there's a lot of um places websites drama sites particularly like behind the bows where you were required to blur out faces and not to mention names so again that makes it harder to figure out who people are even talking about um, and not to say that it's bad, of course, it's probably better for everyone if faces get blurred out and names don't get mentioned. Um, and today, in this video, I will be blurring out at least full legal names that I know of or suspect. First thing that I'm going to talk about is a pretty light-hearted one, um, Kurito Risu. <laughs> so, Bodyline used to have these contests apparently where you could submit the signs and name ideas and like I mentioned in the main iceberg video, Bodyline, at least in their first years, were not at all taken seriously. They were not really known for quality or for good designs. Um, they used to, at the very least, they used to copy designs, essentially making replicas um, and just kind of have very haphazardly made the science and very awkward looking things. Um, so when these contests, contests started to come up, um, Japanese Lolitas essentially trolled them by submitting ridiculous prints and names. And among one of those was Kurito Risu, which is, could be translated as squirrel and chestnut. But of course, it sounds just like kuriturisu, which sounds just like clitoris. And as far as I understand, that is actually the name that is used for that body part in Japanese. Although I'm not sure about that, because they, they probably must have had a name for that before they, you know, before they were introduced to the English language. But I don't know how that went down. As always, if you know more than I do, um, I'm all ears to know about that. Cakes and Couture. So this was a Hainuli event that happened in Tampa, Florida in 2017. And long story short, it was badly organized and it was kind of expensive for what it was. According to this CGL post, the tickets were $80 or $150 for VIP. Uh, the food was apparently not very good, the organizers' friends were giving preferential treatment and including three times more tickets for the raffle, so they, they ended up winning most of the prizes. They only had sugar for the tea and they ran out of it, as well as running out of hot water for the tea as well. Uh, mimosas were promised for VIPs, but only some of them got them and they didn't have enough for everyone. Um, there was also someone who said that she had paid for a VIP ticket and they had been promised champagne but they ran out just before they got to serve her and they just didn't 
serve her anymore they didn't go for to buy more or anything they just kind of didn't serve her so it was kind of left like that um and i also a comment according to a commenter on raffle chat the event started one hour late the only sweets were like really cheap dollar store ones like starbursts and stuff like that um, some of the sandwiches had mold on them and apparently there was like a weird belly dancer um, show going on like in the event itself I have it understood that there was sort of an... Um, there was like some sort of connections going on between the organizers of the um, Cakes and Couture event and those belly dancers themselves so it figures that maybe they didn't have enough money to pay for some other type of entertainment and they had these other people who kind of um, maybe gave them a discount or maybe even free who knows but it was a bit odd I guess also a commenter on Lovely Lore's video about this event uh, says that during the tea party outsiders were going in, like people who were not part of the event were kind of coming into the part where the event was taking place and were taking pictures of people of Lolita's without permission um, and it just sounds overall like it wasn't great now to be fair it's not easy to organize an event and have special guests especially because they had people like Lovely Lord they had a lot of different vendors who are well known um, but at the same time, for $80 to $150, I think you would be justified in expecting way better than this. Random Lolita Live Journal groups. So back in the day when Live Journal was more of a real thing, so to speak, um, there used to be quite a variety of um, different groups like journal groups for lolitas who had different things in common outside of the fashion right so in this screenshot that i found um there was a group for bdsm lolitas christian k um so for christian lolitas cf lolitas community for lolitas who are child free lolita diviners um muslim j fashion Pagan Loli. Loli was, by the way, back in the day, like 10 years ago, calling Loli, calling Lolita fashion Loli for short was more common. It was, it was accepted, basically. It was um, a normal way to refer to the fashion. And sometimes people said like, oh, um, sweet Loli or gothic Loli. And that was normal back then. But I guess because of the association with lolicon that kind of became less common to say um, because loli also is used sometimes as a shorthand for lolicon so it figures that over time it just you know of course um, lolitas typically don't want to be associated with that so that's another thing but there was also pride lolita stoner lolis again the lolis um, there was apparently all, all sorts of different um, niche groups, niche within within a niche type groups back in the day. I was... I do remember being to Lolita back when Live Journal was a thing, but I don't... I wasn't really part of the community, I just knew about the fashion. Um, so I was never able to experience the Live Journal Lolita days where people had all of these different groups. Now it feels like we don't really have like a centralized website where we can discuss the fashion um, because there's all sorts of different places. There's like Reddit, um, Facebook groups, Instagram, but those are not really the same thing that Live Journal apparently was, where everything was kind of in all, all in one place. Um, and that would have been interesting to have back in the day. Lolified memes. So I mentioned Lolita Hank Hill briefly in the main iceberg video, but basically back in the live journal days again, people, and even more recently actually, people made and keep making edits of different cartoon characters or general like pop culture memes um, in Lolita, wearing Lolita fashion, and mostly accessories really. And that includes um, Hank Hill, of course, from King of the Hill, 
um, there's a Lolita Feel You Frank in general lolified memes of different kinds from back in the day and there's also a more obscure Lolita Kaiji made from this Kaiji character from Gambling Apocalypse Kaiji manga slash anime. Um, apparently it's like super niche because when I found it there were people in the comments saying like oh I never thought I would see this. Um, so apparently that's a not a very well known um, anime in the first place. And I, you know what else I wanted to mention? I don't know why I thought about this just now. But I feel like, and correct me if I'm wrong, tell me in the comments if you don't really feel the same way. But I feel like Lolitas back then, like 10 years ago or more, used to be more weebish than they are today. I feel like maybe today people find Lolita through different media that have nothing to do with Japan or anime itself. So they, they're not necessarily weaves by the time that they find out about Lolita. I don't know, I feel like it used to be quite common for people to be both into... like if you were a Lolita you were probably into anime um, and it actually used to be kind of a stereotype for Iras back in the day, like the stereotypical Ira back then was really into anime and like wore anime-esque stuff, like cosplay type stuff with her lolita and stuff like that. It was like a general idea that people had back then, but it was not it was not bad to be a weeb or anything. Um it was again it was common, it was kind of like the norm. And I feel today like maybe Lolitas aren't necessarily weebish, maybe? I don't know, but I mean I'm sure there's still quite the overlap, but there's probably less it's probably a smaller percentage than it used to be. Let me know if you feel the same way. Um, but anyway, let's get to the next one. BTS's B Little Kitty, originally Little Pussy. <laughs> so apparently... Okay, so there's gonna be a bit of a revision here because I think I misunderstood this entry here. I was told by someone on Raffle Chat um, that they had initially named this print this little kitty print little kitty bouquet was initially using a different word for kitty and of course i assume that word was p right um but it seems that may not have been what they meant i think because when you look it up i, I cannot find any evidence of them ever naming it little pussy <laughs> bouquet um i can only find them originally naming it rant cat which is kind of a weird name but nowhere near as dramatic as i feel like pussy would have been um and yeah it's not quite what i thought it was but it was apparently called rant cat which is a bit of a weird name i guess so i'm still gonna keep the entry Kamikaze Girls Personal Massagers. So there's this brand called Salo USA that made these personal massagers, if you know what I mean. Um, and there was this Lolita collection um, with products named Momoko, Ichigo, Baby Heart, and Baby Star. So yeah, <laughs> that's pretty obvious, I feel. The main characters of Kamikaze Girls and you know, the, the names uh, that seem to reference Baby Star Shine Bright. Um, and the packaging is also very like sweet Lolita-esque. It's really like angelic pretty items, kinda. Um, I guess it could be a coincidence, but honestly, I really don't think so. I think it's not a coincidence at all. Pixie Teddy. So Pixie Teddy was a lol cow. Um, mostly discussed on CGL and I guess probably um, Lolcow, Kiwi Farms or whatever. She was honestly... I watched uh, half of a very long video about her and from what I could tell she was honestly nothing that bad. She was I guess cringe I guess and made weird posts about her life and she was one of those weebs from back in the day who thought that she was Japanese on the inside and was kind of like delusional about being Japanese but honestly who hasn't had a phase where they wanted to be Japanese okay let's be fucking honest here and she wanted to be a Japanese idol which 
I guess some people found to be particularly delusional. Um, and she was mostly a cosplayer, but she went into Lolita for a short while. Um, and apparently her initial course weren't even that bad. But she did post her art to a Lolita live journal community and they weren't that good, the drawings. And she posted them requesting specifically that people don't criticize them, which is always a move that's gonna make people dislike you because... I mean, I guess you could, you could argue like why post stuff on the internet if you're not willing to hear any criticism, you know? But hey, I mean, it's not that much, it's not that big of a deal, it's not a crime, it's not that deep. Um, and people kind of did start to, you know, um, make fun of her and be a little bit hostile towards her as a result of this post. And that got her posted on Get Off EGL with again, rather hostile comments over and over around, that was around 20, 2005, 2000, 2009, sorry. Um, honestly, as far as I can tell, like, like I said, she never did anything that wrong. It was just kind of a delusional persona that had people invested in hating her. And I would rather say that she was someone who um, kind of lacked self-awareness and was really naive and... It was pretty clear as well from her content that she didn't have a very good home life um, and some people online were kind of taking advantage of that, I'd, I'd say, to their own amusement and kind of um, trying to convince her to do things that would kind of only worsen her situation. Um, and honestly, the whole thing is, is really sad and... I don't know, it makes me feel bad for her really more than... It makes me see... I think it's weirder really to be that invested in someone on the internet than to be that person, you know, than to be that that self, self non-self-aware person. Um, and so Cecil McFly has a video about this that I mentioned and it's almost two hours long, which is why I didn't watch the whole thing. But I think I did kind of get the gist of it. Petty challenge. For the life of me, I can't find this anymore. Please let me know if you can find it because I really was just looking all over. But I swear there was this post from this guy. It was either on the Lolita subreddit or possibly a Facebook group or something. But he was trying to make this whole petticoat challenge type thing where the challenge was to stuff as many petticoats as you could under your dresses or something but it was pretty obvious that this person was some kind of fetishist um i figured that because of that it probably got deleted super quickly and that's why i can't find it anymore but i do remember seeing that real time and there's other people who also remember it because they mentioned it on raffle chat on that post that i mentioned poodle corp girl Apparently, there was this girl on Lolita Amino who was kind of getting annoyed at criticism for her first chords and she started threatening people with sending hackers to them, particularly Poodle Corp, um, hence the name. And there's these screenshots of her talking to someone about who she's gonna send hackers, she's gonna, how she was gonna send hackers to certain people. And she also said something about how ridiculous her clothes were, which is weird because she was trying to be one of those ridiculously dressed people, right? But, you know, it's not actually gonna be the last time you hear about someone not being sure whether they hate or want to be Lolita. Peace Chan. So I was surprised to see that this was actually fairly recent. It was either 2020 or 2021, and long story short, this person posted a picture of themselves wearing Lolita while pissing on the street with a caption saying something about how everyone secretly wishes they could let loose while wearing Lolita and we're too scared to do it. Um, I'm not sure why this happened. Um, Francis. So I'm gonna call her just Frances, in, just in case, even though I'm pretty sure that 
that's not really her real name even. Some people say that she was most likely a troll. I don't think so. Um, and I'm gonna tell you why in a moment. But basically the thing with her, there was a lot of drama surrounding her. Most of that I think is not around anymore. This went down around 2013 or so. So it's been a while, of course. Um, it was weird because basically in her profile, she was talking about how ridiculous Lolita's look and also kind of complained but sim simultaneously she was complaining about not being able not being allowed on certain lolita groups um like facebook groups she mentioned lolita humor and i guess cgl as well because she was talking about 4chan and how she had been banned for from 4chan i didn't know you could get banned from 4chan by the way can you but the thing that's weird about her is that she made all of these posts on her personal facebook profile to her normie friends with pictures of Lolitas and she would be like, oh, these dresses are so weird, these are so ridiculous, who would ever wear this, yada yada yada, like, I would never wear this in public. And she and her normie friends would mostly agree with her. But what's weird is that she had numerous of these posts. She didn't just like see the fashion and went okay like that's weird and made a post about it and left it at that like she had multiple posts but again what's weird is the fact that she was trying to be a lolita herself or at least she was trying to infiltrate the community um like she made a live journal profile at the very least and she made posts again on her profile on her facebook profile to her normie friends complaining about not being accepted into certain lolita groups so that's like, which is it, right? I mean, it does seem that this happened in a chronological way in which she first tried to be a Lolita or to like be part of the community. And it fears that something happened. Maybe she got criticism on her clothes. Like maybe she got told that it wasn't Lolita or something. And she started to complain about it on her profile and because she was taking these pictures of people to make fun of them, people banned her from the groups and therefore she complained more. I guess that's kind of the general gist of what I can take from it. Honestly, it was very hard to um, research her profile because back then she was, she was one of those people around those years that this went down. She was one of those people who made multiple posts every day. And I just couldn't really go through all of it. I was like, this, no, it's not worth it at all. Um, and most of it was not that interesting. She was like selling Mary Kay or something. And she, again, she kept making those posts about how ridiculous it is to dress that way to the point where even some of her normie friends were like, what the hell is your problem? And what's also weird is that a lot of her posts were about pantyhose too and how she loves it and she will always wear always wear pantyhose no matter what and she she keeps wearing pantyhose in the summer or whatever like she was constantly talking about pantyhose among her posts oh the reason why i'm saying that i don't think she's a troll is because i think she secretly wanted to be a lolita she wanted to wear a lolita but she was too afraid I think socially she was afraid to be seen in public wearing clothes that people could consider ridiculous um which is why she made those posts calling them ridiculous you know maybe to get validation or maybe to hope that people would not agree with her i don't know but um and it's also very obvious from her posts both from her posts and from the responses that she got on her Facebook profile by her, again, normie friends, that she had a circle of friends and people around her who were very religious. And for that reason, she probably felt not, she probably felt like she couldn't really wear Lolita among people that she probably would be misunderstood or um, who knows, that's kind of the analysis that I get from this, that she probably, um, probably made those posts out of frustration and actually really did like the fashion but just wasn't sure how to go about it you know um but yeah that's that's really strange Decawanko. it's a manga slash tv show 
that is about this detective who wears Lolita fashion and hangs out with our Lolitas too sometimes. The show was apparently sponsored by Angelic Pretty and Misako Aoki appears in a scene or two and I haven't been able to find it anywhere to stream but Dodo the Extinct made a video about it so if you want to know a bit more about it I would check out that video um, but like I said I don't even know where you can stream it. I guess you could find the manga somewhere but it is a live action show by the way so it's not you're not gonna find it on Crunchyroll or anything. L-A-C-E So long story short from what I can understand and this is one of those things that I'm sure some of you know way more about than I do because you were there um, I somehow missed out on the whole thing even though I was already into Lolita when this happened but from what I understand in 2015 Girlyhood who was a very well-known Lolita from the years that this went down started this movement called LACE or Lolitas Against Cyberbullying and Exploitation a few other well-known Lolitas of the time made other videos supporting it, including Pixie Locks. Um, a lot of people at the time thought that Girlyhood was only doing this to basically get more attention and become more famous and that the whole thing was more of a response to criticism that was directed towards her in particular. Um, Pixie Locks made a video supporting the movement and that video has actually been deleted along with a re-upload of it. I cannot find any re-uploads of that video at all, so I don't know what she said on that video, but she became very strongly linked to LACE to the point where when I started researching this thing, I actually thought she had been the one to start it. But what I can find was this parody response video by SuperCarly64. Um, which I can't, uh, I gotta be honest, that video kind of made me feel, like, it left me feeling some type of way. I don't know, but I, she, I felt like some of the points she was trying to make were not very strong, regardless of what she was really responding to. I guess it's easier to um, be critical of her because she actually left the video up, whereas the people that she was responding to deleted their own video. Um, and she was particularly responding to Pixie Locks, so she wasn't actually making the video about girlyhood, although she was also talking about her a little bit. Um, I don't know, there was this... the whole thing was really strange, actually. It's very obvious that before girlyhood started that movement, there had been some drama um, either about her or either something that she did or either, either, either she did something or people just disliked her or a little bit of both, but there was definitely something going on. BTSSB blacklisting slash xenophobia. So during the early 2010s, up until around 2016 or so, there was this general knowledge that the baby customer service could become more hostile if you were a foreigner. There were a few stories from people who got blacklisted by baby for reasonable requests or just general conflict that was the kind of conflict that is just kind of bound to happen uh, with any seller-buyer situation. For example, there was this post from Live Journal from 2012 which details someone paying $125 for an item from Baby and it shows up as paid on her end and the money left her bank account and it went to Baby. But Baby tells her that the payment doesn't show up on their end so they won't send the item. But since they won't send it to the, to her and she did spend 125 on it she tells her, she tells them to give her the money back but they refuse however she had paid through paypal and she opened the claim and therefore they basically force her to refund her and they tell her later that she's been blacklisted and basically accuse her of lying telling her something that something about how they can't expect honest business from her or something um there's also this instance of someone from customer service at baby responding to an issue with something about how chinese people are short-tempered and how they're afraid of their chinese customers they later made some sort of apology for it and the person reportedly resigned 
but it was kind of a big deal because it was very specifically against Chinese people and I feel like this feels particularly pointed because there's already kind of an, an attitude among uh, some Japanese people against Chinese people and honestly xenophobia is overall an issue um, around the world, not just in Asia but even particularly I would say in the West um, and but apparently again that person supposedly does not work with them anymore there was actually from what I remember people only pointed back then pointed to one person as to be the person who often blacklisted foreigners um, and there was a first name to go along with it I don't remember it anymore but there used to be at least this belief that there was one person who was behind this whole issue who was part of baby customer service Novala Takemoto arrest so Novala Takemoto the person who wrote uh, Shimotsuma Monogatari which is Kamikaze Girls was arrested in 2007 for cannabis possession so in Japan just being charged with cannabis possession could carry a sentence up to five years in prison I've not been able to figure out if he went to prison for it, but you could argue that this incident essentially ended his career. Um, the use of weed is apparently very stigmatized in Japan and being charged with use or possession may get you fired from your job and could very well end your career. It's affected a lot of Japanese sportsmen and actors, found with cannabis, even Paul McCartney spent a few days in jail in Japan after being found with some of it. Um, so in Takemoto's case, his merchandise lined with Baby and with Sanrio were pulled quickly from the shelves and the companies basically went on to pretend to have never done business with him. I hate to say it, I hope I don't sound ridiculous. I don't know who this man is. I mean, he could be walking down the street, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know a thing. Sorry to this man. Angelic Pretty Jenga Outfit so Angelic Pretty came out with this outfit in 2011, uh, which was a collaboration type thing with Jenga. It was made for that year's Tokyo Toy Show, specifically for the girls at the Jenga booth. I'm not sure if it was released for the public as well. Um, I would guess no, because it's not even Lolita, so I don't really think they would sell that. They it would really sell at all. But I'm interested to know if, if maybe back in 2011, if you were there, if you ever heard of it actually being sold to people. Yeah, that's pretty much the whole addendum tier 7 to the Lolita Iceberg and I hope you found this video interesting or entertaining and yeah, tell me down below what you know about this and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!